suspension forks are one of the most important parts of any mountain bike. Given how much influence they have on bike handling, comfort, control, and most importantly, your confidence that the bike is going where and doing what you want it to do, they are often the first big upgrade that many riders are keen to shell out on. With the price of many forks now touching close to four figures or more, and even less expensive options still being quite an investment, it's an important choice to get right. To help you out, we've pulled together eight 29 inch Euro forks from big brands to see which comes out on top. The forks we have on test are all long travel forks designed for enduro riding and racing. They are Cane Creek's Helm Mark II, the DVO Onyx SC D1, EXT's Era V2, the Formula Salva R, Fox 38 Performance, Manitou Mesa Expert, Marzocchi Bomber Z1 Air, and the RockShox Zeb Select. Now before you scream in the comments that we haven't included X, Y or Z fork, then don't worry as we've tested a whole bunch of other forks in a previous video, which you can check out via the link in the description. To keep things consistent, we've tested them all on the same bike with the same tyres, tyre pressures and bar heights and rode the same trails. This allowed us to clearly focus on the differences between the forks and feel how they compare in terms of chassis stiffness, spring feel and of course damping control. All the forks here use burly chassis with stanchions varying from 35 to 38 millimeters, have 160 to 170 millimeters of travel, and are air sprung. No smoother silk coil springs here. To ease the dreaded thought of compatibility woes, they all thankfully use boost through axle spacing, 1.5 inch tapered steerer tubes, and have 44 millimeters of offset, with the exception of the formula, which is 43 millimeters. Why not just make it 44 mil formula? With all that said, let's jump into how the forks performed on the trail and which came out on top. The mid-level Fox 38 has all the adjustability of the top tier 38 factory fork, but forgoes the slippery gold Kashima coating on the stanchions. While it looks a little less blingy, it should provide similar performance. The Grip 2 damper has Fox's VVC high and low speed compression and rebound damping adjustment, while its Evolt air spring also features. As the name suggests, it has chunky 38mm stanchions and burly magnesium lowers. These really make the 38 a very commanding fork. No matter how hard you push it into a hole, compression or turn, it fires you out the other side, on whatever line you choose to take. It is the heaviest fork on test, however, at 2.46kg. The Evolt air spring in Fox Forks has always been impressive. Stiction is minimal and it feels plush yet supportive. Where the 38 Performance Elite comes unstuck is in its damping. The Grip 2 cartridge's heavy damping may well work for heavier riders, but our sub 75kg test team members had to run both compression settings fully open to eke out some sensitivity, limiting the performance of this otherwise impressive piece of kit. The firm support means you lose comfort compared to the others on test, and there just isn't enough initial sensitivity to make the fork as good as it could be. DVO might not be a name that springs to mind when you think of suspension forks, but the Onyx SCD1 is full of top of the line features. It packs low and high speed compression and low speed rebound damping adjustments, along with the on-trend lower leg bleed valves and the brand's OTT or off the top adjuster. This is a coil negative spring that you can preload in order to tune how sensitive the initial 30% of the travel is without influencing the remaining 70%. With robust 35mm stanchions, the DVO has plenty of muscle to keep you online. We didn't notice any discernible flex or binding when putting it under high loads. The ride feel is middle of the road. The DVO isn't the most lively, active fork on test, but neither is it aggressively high riding and supportive. We ran the OTT adjuster fully closed to provide the most sensitivity. Doing this gave an excellent initial feel that kept the wheel tracking the ground accurately, helping maintain grip. Deeper into the travel, the Onyx is a fairly smooth performer, but the damper does give the fork a firmer feel. This provides good support to push against, but also transfers more feedback to the rider through the handlebar. While it's the most expensive fork on test, EXT's era is also one of the most interesting, and one we were very keen to spend some time on. The era V2 is the only fork here made in Europe, and also uses a clever hybrid coil and air spring. This has two adjustable positive air chambers to control mid and end stroke support and a coil spring to improve sensitivity. Damping wise, there's external low and high speed compression and rebound adjustment. While the era isn't as beefy on paper as the RockShox Zeb or Fox 38, we couldn't flex the 36mm chassis out of shape 
and it feels as precise as anything here. While it works best when you're riding fast and pushing it hard, it's also one of the more fatiguing forks on test. The Era V2 isn't the most sensitive and doesn't hunt down traction like the most supple options over small slippery rocks and roots. Even with a light compression and rebound tune, we still had to run the adjusters fully open to get a decent level of sensitivity. Mid-stroke support is very good, which gives a composed feel on the trail, with no jarring changes in handlebar height to contend with, and it lets you stay on top of the trail bumps, helping you carry speed impressively well. EXT have sent us an updated ERA V2.1 for testing, so stay tuned to BikeRadar.com for more on that in the coming months. The Select may be the cheapest Zeb that you can buy, but it shares the same 38mm stanchions and new for 2023 Debonair Plus Spring as the top of the range Zeb Ultimate. However, it uses RockShox less sophisticated Charger RC damper rather than the latest Charger 3. This means you only get external low speed compression and rebound damping adjustment, giving it fewer adjustments than the others on test. You can still fine tune the air spring progression with volume spacers though. With the new spring, the fork rides higher in its travel. That helps you keep the front end of the bike up so you can push and load the handlebar into turns. The Zeb Select isn't the most supple when riding across small bumps, limiting confidence over routes and in unsupported corners where traction is a must. Even running 5 psi less pressure than RockShox recommends, it isn't the most sensitive fork on test. Get it up to speed though, and the support in the mid-stroke gives you the confidence to point the Zeb into a rough section of trail, knowing it will soak up the bigger hits without getting phased. The rebound damping has a good range and lets you run the fork fast so it can recover between impacts. The fork is certainly impressive for the price, but it's hard to adjust for support and comfort simultaneously. The Z1 from Italian Maestro's Marzocchi has been a consistent performer for years now. Modern Marzocchi forks might not be the oil-filled open bath wonders of yesteryear, but the Z1 does use parent company Fox's user-friendly and high-performing grip damper. This features external low-speed compression and rebound adjustment, and also its Evolt air spring. These are housed within a Marzocchi chassis with 36mm stanchions, though if you reckon 36mm upper legs are too weak and flexy for modern long travel forks, you might want to think again. The Z1 can be ploughed into drops, holes or pinball rock gardens without a second thought and it just keeps trucking along exactly where you point it. Despite the basic damper, it has a supportive yet plush feel and carries speed incredibly well. However, it doesn't sit into its travel quite as well as the cheaper Manitou Mesa does, so it isn't as incredibly supple off the top. It absorbs square inch bumps efficiently though and does a great job of soaking up rough trail features without transferring much feedback to the rider. We also like how predictable it feels when charging into a rough trail section. The stiff chassis, progressive air spring and decent damping control work well to provide loads of support without feeling harsh. It's certainly a very impressive performer given its more budget friendly price tag. While on the outside, it might not look to have the stature to compete with the biggest forks here, thanks to its maximum of 160mm of travel and smaller 35mm stanchions, the latest Cane Creek Hound performs on the trail where it really counts. That smaller chassis and shorter travel does make it one of the lightest forks here though, at just over 2kg. Another feature that sets the Hound apart from the big OEM brands like Fox and RockShox is that their products are hand-built in their North Carolina facility, meaning quality control should be exceptionally high. Like many of the other forks here, it has externally adjustable high and low speed compression damping as well as low speed rebound adjustment. Unlike most of the other forks though, it has an air spring with an independently adjustable high volume positive and negative air springs. This gives you a chance to fine tune the negative pressure compared to the positive to further improve the suppleness of the initial travel. It takes a little figuring out to set up, but once you get there, it's an impressive piece of kit. The fork is wonderfully supportive through the initial part of its travel, giving it a ride that takes a lot of the sting and buzz out of the trail and offering a very plush ride where there isn't any harshness that feeds back to the rider. It provided tons of traction through roots and slippery rocks and held speed very well over technical terrain. It doesn't have the most supportive mid-stroke, but there's a good range of low speed compression damping if you want to wind it on. You'll sacrifice a little bit of that sensitivity though. Through repeated bumps, the fork is composed, although for lighter riders, the rebound range might not be fast enough because we were very near the end of the rebound damping limit across our 75 kilogram test team. Heavy riders shouldn't have any issues, however. Bigger hits are dealt with comfortably too. 
Despite its smaller chassis, the Haub is plenty stiff enough and can easily be placed where you want your front side to be. It tracked the ground well on different cambers and we didn't get bounced offline or find our front wheel not going where we wanted. We were impressed with the Hell Mark II Air. The setup process is a little time consuming and at £1,099 it isn't cheap. But once you've got them feeling how you want, they feel incredibly capable and a worthy alternative to the big brands. Manitou's Mesa Expert is the cheaper sibling of the Mesa Pro we've tested previously, costing a very respectable £700 or $849. Despite that tempting price, the Mesa outperforms a lot of far more expensive forks. The Mesa Expert wouldn't be a Manitou fork if it didn't do things a little differently. It's built around unique 37mm stanchions and a reverse arch design that claims to save weight while maintaining stiffness. Considering its enduro ambitions, the Mesa Expert is very light at just over 2kg, making it the lightest fork on test. It features externally adjustable low speed compression and rebound damping with a lockout. The air spring also has built in volume adjustment. There are bleeder valves on the back of the arch to release air pressure buildup in the lower legs, but they need an Allen key to use and not a simple push of a button like those found on the Fox 38. The air spring uses self-equaling positive and negative chambers and is dubbed Expert Air. It also uses Manitou's IVA or Incremental Volume Adjuster System. This allows you to modify the positive air chamber volume by rearranging self-contained spacers. Manitou uses what it calls its VTT 6P damper. This open bath cartridge has a six position external compression adjuster that simultaneously adjusts the high speed and low speed damping. It also has low speed rebound damping, which is adjusted at the bottom of the fork. We set the measure to 50 PSI, which is a little over what Manitou recommended for our 75 kilo test team. We also ran the compression open, which ended up as our preference for how we wanted the fork to feel. That said, the six clicks of compression damping will be useful for lighter or heavier riders, with each click having a noticeable effect. From the get-go, small bump sensitivity was excellent. When cruising along chattery trails, the Mesa's low breakaway force meant that they sat comfortably in their sag range and soaked up small bumps nicely. This helped reduce buzz through the handlebars and maintain tire contact. Midstroke support is middling, but its ability to use its travel and recover from repeated hits quickly delivers excellent control. We could reach full travel with our settings and were never hesitant about landing drops or plowing into deep compressions. The Mesa always had enough support but it didn't feel harsh. The Mesa Expert doesn't have the most lively ride feel, but it does provide a ton of grip and confidence in the corners, through rocks, roots and rough sections of trail. On the trail, the burly chassis meant the Mesa felt stiff enough and we never noticed it flexing or biding significantly under heavy loads. The Mesa is a solid all-rounder. The small bump sensitivity is impressive, with a comfortable yet supportive mid-stroke support and the compression and rebound work very well for a wide range of rider weights. This is wrapped up in a stiff but usable chassis that provides accurate handling. There's no denying that Mesa Pro's performance to price ratio is exceptionally good, especially as this was the cheapest fork on test. Formula may be better known for their brakes, but after this test, the Salva R might just change that. The 35mm stanchions may be the joint smallest here, but the Salva certainly makes up for it in the adjustability stakes. They use an air spring with independently filled positive and negative air chambers. This allows you to run higher pressure in the negative chamber for a more supple initial part of the travel. Fork progression is controlled by Formula's Neopos new positive volume spacers, which are made from a closed cell foam that squashes as the suspension compresses, due to the increased air pressure in the positive air chamber. These are dropped into the positive air spring and are free to float around inside. Formula claims this has several benefits compared to regular volume spacers. The Neopost won't have time to shrink during high-speed compressions, so it takes up more space in the positive air chamber, increasing progressivity and support. During low-speed compressions, however, the Neopost has more time to squish, giving a more linear ramp-up and allowing more travel. There is externally adjustable high and low speed compression damping and low speed rebound damping and you can actually swap out the compression valve for Formula CTS or compression tuning system. There are seven different valves, two of which are included, to choose from which can modify the fork's behaviour. Furthermore, there is a lockout lever with adjustable threshold should you want it. The Salva R undoubtedly has to be the most user tunable fork on the market. 
the 35mm chassis also makes it one of the lighter forks here at 2.1 kilograms. We ran 76 psi in the positive air chamber and 96 psi in the negative, which was close to Formula's recommended settings. We also ran the compression damping open to get maximum comfort. It took a few runs to get the Salva R to a setting we were happy with though. Initially, we found the mid-stroke too supportive and felt like we were being beaten up by the trail and it was a challenge to keep the front wheel where we wanted it. We removed the Neopost spacer and changed the pre-installed red CTS valve to the blue one while keeping the same pressures. This gave the fork more comfort and movement in the mid-stroke and made the ride much more forgiving. Even without the Neopost, the progression was impressive and we never entirely used full travel. The forks handled very well and we never experienced unnecessary flex or binding that inhibited their performance. The great thing about the Salva R is that you can tune it to your preferred setup within a few minutes. And that's not just compression and rebound speeds, but how the spring and damping behave. On the trail, the forks are incredibly smooth and composed. They provided the small bump sensitivity and mid-stroke comfort that we wanted with enough progression to keep the forks from sitting too deep in their travel. As a result, we never worried about having to back off when things got rough and rowdy. The salvers are plush, smooth, relatively light and thoroughly impressed us, which makes them our top pick of this group test. So Formula takes top honours for the best enduro bouncers around and with that we conclude this year's fork group test. We'd love to know what you think is the best fork around and if you have any experience of the ones we've tested. Be sure to hit us up in the comments, give this video a like if you enjoyed it, subscribe to the channel and if you want more Enduro energy then check out this video.